I'm mainly obsessed with the relationship between image and sound. So the program is mainly about that, but a bit about data vending, which is what I do right now mainly, but also some audio reactive stuff. And one analog film, I mean completely analog. Well, it was made with a digital camera, but <laughs> I'll explain a bit later, but yes, mainly data vending. It's a technique which is mainly related to glitch art, in which you have some kind of file, maybe sound, maybe images, but maybe some other kind of thing. It could be a PDF or whatever. And you save that as another type of file. So you generate with the same data a different kind of, of thing. I use it mainly with image and sound. I can generate sounds from images or images from sounds, but you could do that with X or, yes, another thing. I had a friend who found one day at her father's home, like an old machine from the 80s, like a new age machine. It was called something like a brain machine, and it was intended to relax and relieve stress and that kind of things. This device had a mini jack. It was for, for connecting a pair of, of glasses with lights. So I thought that maybe if I use a, a sound cable, I could hear something. And that was true. I used that sound that was not really a sound, but light signal to generate a soundtrack. And then I, I made a video using another old machine, an old CRT TV set. And I put together both things. Uh, what happened was curious because images are completely unrelated to, to sound. But as the frame is changing all the time, it's like the images and the sound are completely synchronized, but it's not really true because the, the sound and the images are completely different. At some point, as I am really interested in, in the relationship between yes. image and sound, I experimented a bit with audio reactive stuff, with modulate and BDMX and this kind of software that is used mainly for beating. And I like these kind of things that move with with the sound. Because usually you are working with random relationships in a sense, because it's not like this sound is exactly this image. In fact, the image can be whatever you want. You are creating an artificial relationship between both of them and I mean I don't have any problem with that but I was interested in looking something more similar to to translation not like a data visualization but something more like this is the same and I know that it's not really possible because in the end what I do is also in a kind of sense data visualization or data sonification but I was more interested in being not so important like an artist in, in the process. I didn't want to decide how this sound must look or how the image must sound. This is the first one that I did translating images to sound and it's really only like a really really short loop with the seven colors of the rainbow 
So it's only seven frames. And the sound is the, the frames. This is the same idea, it's uh, sound generated from images, but mm, images are not digital, it's a, it's a video. And it's, I think that it's mm, curious because it's not really edited, the video is just a light bulb going on and off. It was mainly about optical sound and the idea was similar to to Arnulf Reiner, really well-known experimental film. And the idea was to use only light. The sound is, it was generated from, from the frames. And the result, I think that it's quite funny because even if everything is digital, I shot it using an old iPod. The kind of aesthetics and, and also the kind of sounds that you get are really similar to, to the optical sound ones that that you get if you work with analog film. It has this kind of retro aesthetic like, that seems like a Super 8 film because it was shot with an app that imitates that kind of stuff but I didn't add any effects using Final Cut or whatever. It's just a, a real shot without any kind of edition shot, as I said, using an iPod. This was an experiment because I have a friend who, who used to have a, a record label mm -hmm. and he asked me if I wanted to do a cassette and I thought, oh, this is a weird idea because my work is really digital, a cassette, I don't know what I can do with a cassette. So I searched for, for a lot of old cassette images in, in a database and I generate a cassette from those photos. Uh, it was like just noise. <laughs> but it was great because with the sound of the background noise of the cassette, the sound was really nice because it, it was like a mix between analog and digital. And then someone asked me to, to make a live performance using that. And I thought, I don't know if I can do this. I, by then I thought, oh, now I I can do the same thing. I can take the sound and generate images again and see what happens. And this is what happened. So was the cassette released as an audio track or what was yes, the purpose it was of this? Re okay. Yes, not many copies, maybe 100 or I don't remember, but yes, I have the cassette at home. Do you not have the VHS with the visual track as well? No. Ah. <laughs> okay. But this one was really hard to do because it's like 55 minutes long and I did convert all the images by hand using Photoshop one by one. So it was like three months like doing something really repetitive because there was like, I mean, it's really easy to translate sound into image. You just have to, to save the file as raw, but for a video, you need a lot of images. And there is one step in Photoshop that you cannot automate. Uh, I was going to ask, can't you make a macros or something? <laughs> Uh, I didn't know how to do it. Then I talked to a friend who is a, a digital artist, but also a computer engineer. And he told me, you are crazy. You cannot do this by hand. <laughs> it's like really stupid to do this by hand. But I talked to him and, and I explained him what I was doing. And we were seeing some options and she 
he suggests the light, maybe we can try, I don't know, pure that or things like that, but there was not really any way. And in the end, we found that we could do this with Image Magic, which is a kind of open source image software, but it's not really like Photoshop because you can create scripts without using any kind of interface. But the first one, which was this, I did it by hand. Okay, you have an audio file, it doesn't matter in which format. You can do it with Audacity. You save this file as raw. Mm -hmm. And then this raw file in Photoshop, it opens, but you have to enter some numbers because Photoshop doesn't recognize. You have to say to Photoshop, this is like 1280 height for this width. And one. You lie to pho Photoshop and you say, this is an image, trust yes. me, and this is how and you have big to it say is. Him, yes, and the colors, because you can choose black and white or, or color. You have to guide the, the sound in really, really short pieces. The equivalent to one frame that I don't know is like milliseconds of sound. So the file is maybe just 4K and you have this really tiny <laughs> image and you have to blow it up. To blow mm. it up. You can do it in several ways, but yes, you only get like really mm -hmm. or square pixels or maybe lines or also shapes. But when you blow the file, this is like a Pixels, horrible yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but if you use some kind of of sharpening filter you get yes forms like, like a more uh, some of the films have different approaches but the the basic technique is always the same This was made especially for the festival, and it's a really it's a really simple animation made with Final Cut, with just three circles and three colors and the inverse colors. So there's six colors and black and white, and it's just that. Uh, when you see this kind of so so flickering images, I start uh, to see things that are not really there. Maybe some kind of patterns of other colors and the sound are the the frames safe as as sound and even if the idea is really simple i think that it's quite overwhelming uh, if you see uh, like in a big screen with a good sound system and this was the film that that won some years ago the the first prize of, of the festival I didn't expect that because the film is really, really minimal. But sometimes I guess the really simple ideas get you to places that you didn't expect at all. And I like it also because you can close your eyes and you are still seeing the film. And I love this kind of films that is a bit like, like they attack you, but at the same time, it's like, relaxing because it's really repetitive. That's why I use sometimes the expression sense the destructive, which I read it in fact in a in a text by Stan Brakach. I think that it's a bit about the senses, the eye, the ears, but also about the sense, the, the mind. With sound it's really easy to, to get some kind of physical reaction because we feel the sound through the bones, not only through the ears. Uh, so if you use really low frequencies, you you can you vibrate, yes, right? You your resonate. Your body vibrates, mm -hmm. but with images it's more difficult because if you don't use like flickering images, I don't know if there is really any other way to to do something similar with images. So that's the flicker. This this want of having people's eye eyeballs vibrate like your bones vibrate yeah. when you listen to music. 
okay. to get something physical, not really so intellectual or narrative or in a sense, noise music is also about that. It's so powerful that you cannot think or feel anything else. You have to be there. Exactly. And exactly. That's that's exactly what you achieve with your work. You must be complex to, to want simplicity. It is like a random quote that I read somewhere, but I think that these films are a bit related to that because most of them are really, really simple, but it's complex because your mind doesn't really get what is happening. I believe so. Like it opens doors instead of closing them into a single narrative or following a single yeah. line of thought, right? I also know that some people don't find this film, so <laughs> I know that both of them are a bit annoying, so... But it, that's not what you're after, you're not after annoying people, uh, you're... Not really, but for example, I will never work with porn or this kind of stuff that is really annoying, no? Hmm. But I think that in a sense, this is a bit like pornographic. Because I read somewhere that, I don't remember who said that, I really like Zen and Velocity by Ernie Gell, which is a film in which you only see a, a corridor, and the image is like doing all the time this kind of movement. Some experimental film, filmmakers said that this film is pornographic because it's like the images are trying to, to fuck you. Or, and I thought that it was a weird idea, but I think that it's a bit Maybe there's true. something there. Yes. This one is a bit different because the sound is not made by, by me. It's by a sound artist who, who was working with feedback. And I generated the frames from, from these sounds. This one was also made by hand because it was before that we could create a, some kind of, of a script for doing this. But the images are a bit different because when I blow up the images, I didn't choose to the, the straight lines and I slice some kind of random shapes. You just want to save one file as other type of file. You cannot change many things because then what you are seeing is not the sound, it's another thing. So in the same idea, I created a lot of really short pieces uh, during one month. It was November four years ago. Every day I made a, a small, a really short like sound using just sine waves and then I generated the images from it. Some of them I think that are better than others but it was like a really nice experience to, to do this challenge and film using like a little bit every day. I was playing a bit with the aspect ratio, so images are not all like pixels, some of them are like lines or a bit different. This was made for, for a festival that takes place in Madrid that is called She Makes Noise because it's a festival that tries to work mainly with women who, who make electronic music. And when they told me if I was interested in doing something for the festival, I thought that it would be nice to use the, 
the website of the festival. They had one page for, for every woman that was playing that year. And what I did was generate a uh, sound from, from all those artists, from not from their work, but from the web pages about their work. I really like this one uh, because it was made like an homage to all these women. If you use noise, usually you have that, I don't know, flickering stuff, like random colors, you don't really know what is happening. But if you use sound waves, sometimes you, you get really distinctive patterns, like diagonal lines, or and it's um, like easier to, to think, okay, I think that this is what is happening. This is also an interesting experiment because a museum asked me to, to do a short film and I didn't know the painter but he's a expressionist a Spanish painter and I thought that maybe it would be interesting to generate sounds from paintings and then images from the sounds and I choose the, the kind of shapes that I use also for computer music studies because I thought that it was more related to, to expressionism that what I usually do with the stress lines. Um, but the technique is the same and it's similar. The only thing is that it was not generated from, from music but from painting. So, in general, what's the response of the audience to your work? In some people, it's really like a maze because it's like, I don't know if I like this, but I can't go away, I can't stop watching. Some people get really annoyed uh, and then tell you. And also one time I discovered by chance because I have some really small nephews who at one time came to one of my and I thought, I told to my brother and my cousins, maybe I'm gonna kill them. Are, maybe, yes, I was a bit afraid. Like, I don't know if kids are, can do, no? I mean, it's really noisy. And, and it was amazing because they were really small at that time, maybe like three, four years old. And then get all by the hand in the first... In the first row. <laughs> row, yes, like this. And I thought, wow, I, I don't know, kids love that. I think that they are so small that they don't have this idea that film has to tell you something. They don't have expectations of what yes. a film should be. And I was really amazed by that. <laughs> This was a similar idea to the one of the November film, but we were in the lockdown, we couldn't go out uh, anywhere. I was sitting in a flat and I had like a quite a small room and I spent every day like <laughs> making photographs of the of the wall, a white wall. Yeah, it's like it's not so interesting. The photos were made with an iPad, which is not so good for making photographs. So if you apply like a sharpening filter, suddenly you have a, a glitch with a lot of colors. And the sound are the images, but the images are real images from, from a white wall. I was born in Ferrol and I grew up in A Coruña, which are both cities in the northwest of Spain, in Galicia. And in Galicia it rains a lot. Sometimes it's like one whole month raining every day. And I really love the rain and I miss it because in Barcelona it doesn't rain so much at all. But as I am obsessed with rain, I have a lot of friends that send me things like photos or films or whatever. And at some point a friend who, who is a sound artist 
uh, shot a, a big thunderstorm from his window and the video is just so wonderful that I had to do something with that. I transformed these images of a thunderstorm into sound. It's a bit like uh, about a twilight state between consciousness and unconsciousness and that is related with sound because sound is like this invisible thing that you can feel but you cannot see so it's like in a um, sense a bit of a twilight state and I also think that this kind of digital conversion translate the, the visual space which is physical to, to the aureal space that is like more emotional for me. All of this have to do with something that I read a long time ago in the Huai Nancy. It's a, like a, this classical Chinese book in which I read this idea that is called Gan Jing, which means resonance and stimulus and response in English. This concept has to do with a kind of interaction that transcends the limits of time and space and ordinary linear casualty. And I think that in the end this is what I'm looking for, like this kind of resonant thing that connects everything, like in some kind of harmonic resonance, which is something that you can observe in musical instruments. I mean, when you touch a string in a in a guitar, another one vibrates at, at the same time. But in our daily lives, we are not so conscious about these small links between things. And I think that in the end, that is the idea that is maybe behind all of my work. <laughs>